Hey everybody, Carl Shu from snorkel.tv here, and today I just wanted to share with you a new class that I've been working on, and uh, let you guys see how it works and uh, start to play around with it. And I'm calling this my Glow and Colorize Item class. And what it does is it takes a display object, it automatically masks that object, and allows us to do this nice little grow and colorize effect when we roll over them. So it does a good deal of work for us, and it's extremely easy to implement. So what I want to show you is that on the stage here, I just have a series of very simple movie clips that just contain uh, bitmap images. And as soon as I export my movie, all that rollover, grow, and colorize magic is handled for me. So what I'm going to do is show you how to implement grow and colorize in your own projects, and then I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the theory behind what's happening. Now I'm going to show you how to implement the grow and colorize item in your own projects. In my library, I just have a very simple PNG here. I'm going to take an instance of it out, put it on the stage, and I'm going to put one right next to it. And this guy here, I'm going to convert to a movie clip and call it MC. I'm also going to give it the instance name of MC. Now we're ready to put some actions in that will make this a grow and colorize item. So I'm going to go over to my actions frame, and I'm going to import the grow and colorize item class and then I'm going to create an instance of this class so I'm gonna say var button is going to be a new grow and colorize item and we're going to say new grow and colorize item and we're gonna pass in a reference to the display object that we want to grow and colorize so in this case it's MC and I'm just gonna do that and now when I test my movie out you'll see that this movie clip here is black and white and when I roll over it, it scales up and it changes color. So it's extremely easy to implement. Now what I want to point out is that when the grow and colorize item is created, it uses the width and height of the display object that we pass in and it creates a mask around that image and also puts in the event listeners for when I roll over and roll off. But since it's using the natural width and height of this object, when I roll over it, I want to point out that it's scaling up to 1.2 times its normal size. So if you're a real pixel stickler, you may notice there's a little bit of blurring happening because we're making it larger than it normally is. And some of you guys aren't going to care too much about that. But what I'm going to do is make another instance of this symbol here. I'm going to call it MC3 and show you that we can also pass in width and height parameters that will make our grow and colorize item a little bit smaller than normal so that when you roll over it will scale up to 100 percent its normal size and you won't have any pixelization so I'm going to take this code here copy and paste and I call that MC3 by accident let's make that MC2 I'll go back to my actions and button 2 is now going to create something out of MC2. But I'm going to pass in a custom width and height. Normally this object is 200 by 150. So I'm going to proportionally scale that thing down a little bit and I'm going to say let's make you 160 wide by 120 tall. I'm going to save and test and now you'll see that the masked area is smaller than the normal size of the image. And when I roll over it scales up to 100%. I would always recommend that when you're scaling something up that you bring it in at the largest size that it's going to display at. So in this case I'm making my masked area smaller than the normal size of the image so that when it scales up there's no pixelization and it's razor sharp. So when you play around with these files you might be able to see a slight blurring uh, on this one right here but you can get around that by making your grow and colorize item a little bit smaller than the image that you're starting out with. Okay, So all that is built into the grow and colorize item. Now I'm going to also show you that in order to use this class you need to have it next to your actual FLA. You need to be able to import it. If we look inside my folder structure here I'm working in grow and colorize demo.fla and I'm importing grow and colorize item.as. Once I finalize this class, I may put it into a, an actual snorkel package, but for now, we're just going to keep it loose. The next thing I want to do is go over some of the theory behind how Grow and Colorize Demo works. 
So I'm going to go to my Grow Presentation FLA, and here I have the poor man's PowerPoint. And what I want to do is just walk through some of the steps that Grow and Colorize item takes care of for you. So you're going to start off with a display object. Right now we'll call it Image MC. And when you pass a reference to this display object into your Grow and Colorize item constructor, what happens is Grow and Colorize item will grab its size, position, and take note of where it lives on the display list. So right here we'll say that the object knows that this thing is at an X of 200, Y of 200. It knows the width and the height. It also knows where on the display list it lives. It lives directly on the stage. But if we had our source image nested three levels down in a movie clip, we would be able to place our grow and colorize item exactly where it was in the display list to start at. And I love the magic mouse, how it scrolls out of the way like that. So the next thing that happens is we take that source image and we rip it off the display list. And then grow and colorize item creates a sprite, which is gonna be a container for our source image and the mask. So it puts that empty sprite on the stage exactly where the source image was. The next thing that happens is that it uses either the normal width and height of the object to create a mask sprite, okay? If we pass in the parameters for width and height, that mask will be smaller than the normal size. But if we're feeling lazy, it automatically just takes the width and height of the display object that we're passing in and creates a mask. The next thing we're going to do is create a container sprite right in the middle of that mask, and that's going to hold our source image. So the orange rectangle is the mask, and then we have this empty sprite smack dab in the center. We then take the source image and we place it inside of that container sprite. And you'll see here that things are offset a little bit funny. Now we always want to scale our images from the center. That's why we're putting them inside of a container that we will scale. And once we have the image inside that little container, smack dab in the middle of the mask, we then offset the position of the source image by half its height and half its width. So the container is still in the center and the image is centered around that registration point there. So we also then take that mask and we tell it to mask the container. And that allows us to be able to scale the image and not see it bleed outside of the mask area. So here you'll see it's at its normal size and then it scales up and it's all being uh, constrained or remains inside that mask. Now there's a slight issue when you apply a color matrix filter to objects that affects their hit area. Um, so what I do is I create another sprite that covers the mask and the container, and that is going to take our mouse events for rollover and roll out. Uh, what happens when you have a color matrix filter applied is that you get some funny pixels around the edges, and when you roll over the edge of an item that has a color matrix filter on it, uh, you can trigger some bogus rollover and out events. So we keep things clean by putting this cover on top. The end user is never going to see that because we set its alpha to zero. So that's just a little fix that I have in there. So I'm really excited about this class. It's a lot of fun to make. And hopefully you can see that your action script in external classes like this allows you to have your main app code very uncluttered. For my grow and colorize file that I started out with where we have six items here that we can very playfully roll over, um, I want to show you that I'm using a document class here and that all I'm doing is creating new grow and colorize items. And all of the actual interactivity and brains of grow and colorize item is going to be stored in my grow and colorize item external action script. So what's beautiful here is that you really don't have to concern yourself with everything that's happening inside this code. All you need to do is import this, uh, this class and you can make as many grow and colorize items as possible, and it's very easy to implement. So I'm going to release this to you guys, and it's very much in a beta stage, but I know that some of you guys out there who are smarter and more experienced than me, um, I'm looking for your feedback here. So if you see anything that could be added as a feature, or anything I'm doing wrong, or something you want to enhance, you know, please, by all means, let me know, make the revisions, post them back to me. Um, I'd really love to hear some feedback. And for those of you guys who are just starting out using uh, OOP concepts, uh, maybe this will show you a little bit about how you, know, you can organize your code 
and keep some of your logic separate in your files, okay? Not have just one big messy file. So you can have a really clean document class and you don't have to worry about having all of the grow and colorize functionality intermingled with maybe the loading of objects or anything else that you're doing. So I urge you guys, download these files, play around with them, and I look forward to your feedback. Hopefully you have some fun trying to implement this in your own projects.